Hello, my name is Paul Conant, former professor of chemistry and former director of the Fluoride Action Network. We have a major study that's been published today in environmental health perspectives, one of the world's leading journals on, on environmental health and a publication of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. The study was a study of uh, in utero effects of fluoride on the brain. It's a study from Mexico. It took 12 years to complete a very thorough study with many and all the confounders that they could think of, and they found a statistically significant relationship between the amount of fluoride in the urine of pregnant mothers and lowered IQ. Uh, this vindicates our work since 2000. In fact, since 1996, my major concern has been uh, the effect of fluoride on the brain. In 1996, we had the first two studies on this published in the English literature. But before then, from 1991, studies from China, a variety of studies from China, which have indicated that in communities with higher levels of fluoride, children have lowered IQ. It's always been a question of whether that was exposure to fluoride during pregnancy in utero or whether the exposure was in the early years of childhood. This study points to in utero exposure. This should spell the end of fluoridation worldwide. How can you possibly continue to expose millions of pregnant women and children to a known neurotoxic substance? Now we know that there's a relationship between how much fluoride a woman is exposed to in pregnancy and the IQ of the children that are born. This is totally unacceptable. There is no way we can control uh, the amount of fluoride that a pregnant woman in the United States or any fluoridated country for that matter if you continue to put fluoride in the water. We can reduce the impact by getting rid of water fluoridation, the deliberate addition of fluoride into the water. But we still have to worry about the amount of fluoride that a pregnant woman gets from toothpaste, fluoridated toothpaste, and how much fluoride she gets from uh, f fluoridated pesticides and, and fertilizers, and some in natural food like teas. And I'll say it just one more time. How on earth can any government justify lowering tooth decay by a small amount, or even a large amount, but in this case, by a very small amount, maybe one cavity over a lifetime, if indeed you are impacting the mental development of our children from the very beginning of life. This is totally unacceptable. It must spell the end of fluoridation worldwide.